My name is Sean Paul Kalchuk, the Messianic Hebrew, and I want to talk to you about the menorah and about our fleshly tents and how specifically about the menorah is about the fact that it was of hammered work. If faith is represent faith and righteousness basically kind of go together because like it says Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness that's what I where I'm connecting this but I want to go to Exodus 25 start off in Exodus 25 verse 31 it says then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold pure gold no human nature. The lampstand and its base, its shaft, are to be made of hammered work. And then it talks about the cups, the branches of the menorah, the three branches on either side with the one in the center. Uh, and it talks about that they're blossoms and they're almond blossoms and bulbs and basically like a tree perhaps what the burning bush looked like then you also see that part about being hammered work in verse 36 it says their bulbs and their branches shall be of one piece with it all of it shall be one piece of hammered work of pure gold then you shall make its lamps seven in, in number and they shall mount uh, verse 40 see that you make them after the pattern for them which was shown to you on the mountain and also the Holy Spirit was given to these people to make this stuff and you can also look at Jeremiah 18 when it comes to forming something if you read Jeremiah 18 it talks about clay in the potter's hands being clay in the potter's hands and Clay doesn't get worked without moisture in it. What do they do to, to solidify it? They they burn it, they put it in a real high temperature environment to completely get rid of the moisture. Just like they put wood in a kiln. Once they cut rough cut the lumber they put it in a kiln to dry it so that it keeps its shape and we are quite in the potter's hands in that in that way through the Holy Spirit whom he gives to those who obey him Acts 532 but I want to one of the ways to bring this home as far as when it how it relates to our bodies and our faith comes um, well I got a couple of things first is our bodies that we are temples of the Holy Spirit we are tents of the Holy Spirit which you read in 2nd Corinthians 5 but first I want want to read um, second well first instead of second Corinthians 5 what I want to read is Romans 10 verse 17 which is kind of where this is based Romans 10 verse 17 so faith comes from hearing and obeying and hearing and obeying 
by the Word of God. Alright? That's how the circumcision happens. And the circumcision happens as we obey, as we are hammered. As we obey, we will get hammered, so to speak, by the trials of life. Things that we struggle with. And to kind of bring that uh, home, we'll go to Hebrews 5, verse 8 all talking about Christ. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. Same thing with us. We learn to obe obey. Why? Well, if you can go back to the book of Judges and see when they disobeyed God, God turned them over to an enemy until they repented and turned, humbled themselves and were humble we're, we're in the to be humble in this flesh we will go to Hebrews 11 here in a minute but now I want to go to second Corinthians 5 talking about the tent I was covering things about faith and I will cover the chapter 11 faith stuff but I want to show first that we are tent we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, our earthly tent, our tabernacle, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan. In this flesh we groan. For lots of reasons. You know, whether it be sin, whether it be getting old and having arthritis and aches and pains. I mean, lots of th reasons we groan. Longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. Inasmuch as we have put it on, uh, will not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life, which I believe that tends to to the third veil, the way, the truth, and the life, which is what Christ was talking about when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's all tabernacle language. Verse 5, Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us, gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. Some interpret it as a down payment, which is rather interesting. It's a down payment. So it is how he dwells with us at the time through his Holy Spirit it's all it's not complete yet but we are being transformed like Paul talks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind well how by growing faith well how does faith grow by obedience and our faith gets shaped by the obedience and as we get hammered on by the world for having faith and exercising that faith. Now let and realize go on to uh, Hebrews 11 something I want to bring up is we are rotting flesh. We these 
bodies are rotting flesh. However, these are also ministry tools. Our arms, our legs, they move in all sorts of different directions and we can do so many things. We can plow fields, we can build things, we can uh, with our mouth we can speak and every there are five love languages like words of affirmation we do use our mouth to communicate to the soul of someone else our mind starts to control our mouth that we encourage people we lift people up we have words of encouragement Paul was trying to encourage several of the churches we uh, <clears throat> acts of service well that's what our, our body we can do with our body is acts of service you know helping someone out doing doing things for other people that's how some people feel loved gifts you know we can put our late we can build things to give to people we can buy things after we've labored we turn our labor into money and we buy something with that money to give to someone else if we don't make it ourselves so you fulfill those three in this flesh touch physical touch physical touch touches the soul of some people it's their love language it is for me quality time is the fifth one what is what is the purpose of this body it's a transportation it's a self-contained transportation life support system for our soul it's a it, it's a transportation system and a life support system for our soul that controls our body with the and as the Holy Spirit works in us which if we are willing to obey in little things he gives us more of the Holy Spirit because we've we've done like the uh, parable of the ten talents we've taken the talents we've had and we've increased them and we've increased them and we've increased them and by that we are exercising our faith you can read in in uh, James or Yaakov talking all about faith and faith without works is dead and we'll get into the faith here in a second but we we the faith chapter which is really important but we grow we become molded in that menorah that menorah within us that in us as Christ said you know is that light if there is light in your eye then there is whole the whole body is filled with light if there's darkness how deep does that darkness go and in some ways those five love languages are how we can help tend someone's light ministry to them witness to them minister to them for me it's an awesome thing to be invited into someone's personal space especially women because they have to be comfortable with you to invite you into their personal space and that's just encouraging in itself or people wanting to sh willing to share things about themselves with you it's a act of trust now 
to help with this faith idea, we'll go into Hebrews. <coughs> Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is an assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen. <coughs> what is Torah? It's conviction. Obeying Torah is convictions of things not seen. We know God made this universe. He, he established the strong force, the weak force, the, the electromagnetic force. All those forces are used in atoms, which ultimately are made of energy. Everything in the universe is made of energy when it comes down to it. E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, right? Well, that's pretty simple because our, the physical being, the physical matter, is made up of electrons, neutrons, and protons. So the electrons are spinning around the nucleus in different energy levels, and those those energy levels are, are is an organization. We can't see these forces, but we can see the result of them. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. There's several ways that that can be. You can look at nature and you can see God because everything has order to it. How is an ecosystem balanced? How is the earth a self-contained life support system for the human race and, and for other animals. We see those things and hopefully that brings conviction that we believe that there is a God. So if we believe there is a God, there are some rules. that That's what the Torah is about, is rules. How we treat one another. Showing the love for each other. Not... not coveting, not stealing, not murdering, not committing adultery, not misusing our, our, our parents, not, not dishonoring our parents, uh, not worshiping graven images, not having other gods before Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, however you want to say it. Not worship, uh, not taking the Lord's name in vain. That's why we obey the rules, so we don't take God's name in vain. If we murder someone, then we've taken God's name in vain. If we covet, we've taken God's name in vain. If we dishonor our parents, we've taken God's name in vain. If we worship graven images, we've taken God's name in vain. If we break the Sabbath intentionally w without some donkey in the ditch situation, we've taken God's name in vain. If we kill, if, if, we, if we steal, if we bear false witness, we have taken God's name in vain. If we say we're going to do something and we don't do it, we take God's name in vain. So that's the thing about conviction. If we have conviction, we do certain things. I have conviction to grow a beard. That's my personal conviction and helps hold me accountable. Ziziot help hold me accountable. A woman wearing skirts and long skirts and dresses as a lifestyle is a way that's going to hold her accountable. A head covering is going to hold her accountable for how she behaves. That's the power of it. And if you think hair is head covering, then maybe that's why I'm going bald. Uh, but I grow my hair to protect, protect my neck and my ears while I'm out in the sun all the time. Most all day. Or a lot of the time. I'm out in the sun doing something. Working on the house, whatever. So that I chose to grow this, and I feel like it, uh, 
as an extension of the nerves it helps me to be more caring more loving and I feel more like a man with having the hairline that I do and having my beard than I ever did before and it's a, an accountability especially the beard and the tassels if I this would be a head covering if I were to put it on the this tallit I, I see it as the prayer closet and I see it as representing Christ putting on Christ that's what I see it representing for me that's my personal convictions and and it holds me accountable wearing it to wearing a tunic in public wearing it to lead in public I'm more aware of my thoughts because I I've, I've had the experience of God impressing upon me that he could reveal my thoughts to people and one of my big fears has been misrepresenting God I think by hiding our sins we can misrepresent God we can um, take God's name in vain in, in some ways um, but those are convictions that have changed my life thing about the Hebraic side of things has given me roots that I never realized I needed and it's driven me toward the leaves of, of a tallit, of a beard, of a tunic, things like that, of ziziot, tassels, numbers 15, 38 through 40, Deuteronomy 22, 12, Zechariah 8, and it's also what the woman with hemorrhage touched. Let's continue. Oh, by the way, you know, gravity and I, I had the strong force, the weak force. We see, we can't see, well, we can see the, ra the visual radiation within a certain spectrum. Just like we can't live outside of a certain temperature without clothing either jackets or whatever and if we don't wear clothes and that we're in the sun all the time guess what we get sunburn there's a re there's a spiritual there's a spiritual truth behind that the radiation that's there and there's so many things that we can't see some say that dark matter exists and whether it does or not I don't know but dark matter, dark energy, and that helped the universe form. That's God. They don't want to admit it, but that is God. That is part of God. He created these rules, and it makes this world work. Why do we have a moon? To stabilize our orbit. Why are we within a certain distance from the sun? Why is the sun so as hot as it is? Is or as cool as it is relatively why why are so many things why are we in, within the Goldilocks zone why is there a Goldilocks zone um, we can feel the wind but we can't see the air moving we can feel the wind we can see dust in the air but we can't we can feel the heat from the Sun and you can, if you're looking, you can, on a hot day, like in a desert, you can see the waves of heat uh, affecting the air, moving the air, and creating waves, mirages, whatever. You can see that, but you can't see, as I was saying, I was talking about the wind and the, the air and the energy we can't see like we can't see ultraviolet but we know it affects our life we can't see gamma radiation but we know it affects our life we can't see uh, infrared but we know it affects our life we can't see a lot of things we can't see the magnetic force we can see a motor move 
when electricity is used or we can see a, a, a light bulb light up if we're got it connected to a generator sure we can see those things that are evidence of so, something going on some rules it's those rules that make life possible the fact that we live where we do the fact that the earth turns as fast as it does the oxygen all those things those are all God's rules so if we obey his rules that's part of conviction that's part of of uh, having faith we have faith by because which is shown by us obeying the rules God set not eating garbage disposals which is basically how you boil down the queen and unclean animals which it existed way back in Noah's day because otherwise God would not have out told him to do that and we have to have faith in a sense because we are told what we have to flee from sin we have to flee we have to accept Christ right well why because if we have faith and, and we start to understand the tabernacle picture we start to see that we have to flee from the wrath of God we have to flee from the judgment of God we do that with having the Holy Spirit that's where conviction and that's how our, we become transformed be not conformed but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that's how this happens practicing faith that's how we get hammered into the shape that our light eventually our light shines he pours his spirit into those who obey him well just like them the high high priest had to go in and pour in oil into those oil lamps and refill those oil lamps as they shine if we're shining we need refilled let's continue here for verse 2 for by it men of old gained approval well let's go back to read verse 1 so we get it in context now faith is the assurance of things hoped for we hope for salvation the conviction of things not seen we've covered that for by by it the men of old gained approval but faith we understand that by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God he spoke something into existence he made the rules the creation obeyed those rules and guess what we have the earth we have the universe we have life on this planet because things obeyed the rules God put we can understand how the body works we can understand how cells work but guess what we can't create cells we can't create life we can manipulate it but we can't create it can't by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the Word of God so that what was seen was not made out of things which are visible the yeah like I was saying particle physics we know these things exist but we can't see them not even with an electron microscope can you probably see them uh, although maybe but there's certain things the way the world world works it, it works on laws that we cannot see instinct same thing okay which are 
By faith, Abel offered up, offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he ordained the testimony that he was righteous, God testifying about his gift, and through faith, through though he is dead, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that the so he would not see death, maybe the death of the in the uh, flood, the death of the flood, maybe not so much his death, but the death of the flood caused in the flood. Because he could have gone with Noah, I'm sure. Um, and he was not found because God took him up, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up he was pleasing to God and without faith it is impossible to please him without faith hope in the things that you cannot see we have faith in the kingdom but we cannot see it yet it's within another dimension to protect us those barriers exist to protect us just like the earth is like the the atmosphere is like a curtain that protects us from the consuming fire the radiation coming from the from the sun and from other things out there the radiation levels would kill us it can kill us or heal us depending on if we get cancer, they can use radiation to cure us. If we don't have cancer, it can give us cancer. Very interesting. Same with a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables and, and things like that. If they can make your eyes water, then they're good for when your eyes are watering when you're sick. I mean, several things. So, eat, okay. Verse six, 6, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, he is a rewarder of those who seek him. That's why we obey the Torah. It's not for salvation. We can't save ourselves. The sacrificial system was evidence of that. But it's about rewards. Go read... Um, Psalm, Psalm 19, verse 7. We could read all of that. I would also highly suggest you read Psalm, uh, Psalm 119 about the law, but verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. And kind of interesting we're talking about the north. Verse 11, though. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his error? Acquit me of hidden things. Also keep back your servant from presumptuous sin. And there's scripture that says, by doing certain things, we keep away from stumbling. Go back to Hebrews 11. Order. By faith, no being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence to, in reverence prepared an ark for salvation of his household, which he condemned, by which he condemned the world and became an error, 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 to the righteousness which was according to faith. 
he believed God and he did something. As we do. If we believe judgment is coming, which is what the prophets are telling us, it just like Jeremiah talks all about why Israel was judged. And you can read in uh, Kings about why Israel was judged. But that's another video. That's about how God deals with us. That's another video. Uh, but we create, we build a tabernacle, we build a an ark of protection by obeying what she gives us the Holy Spirit and that's what builds the ark. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in a land of promise, in a foreign land. And we do the same thing. We leave Egypt... When we accept Christ, we leave Egypt, we become baptized, leaving Egypt, because that is kind of the boundary between Egypt, the world, Babylon, and Israel, the promise of the world, and then, and, but first the wilderness. Just like they were in the, but he obeyed, he, he trusted God. Abraham left his land. If we, we follow in his footsteps by leaving the world and the, and the traditions and the culture of the world, that's where head covering and modesty are so powerful. And ziziot and tassels and beards and all these things can be, so, and eating queen meats, queen animals only, making sure we drain the blood that now we know about bloodborne pathogens. They didn't back then. We practice sanitation, which is also talked about in the Torah. Uh, so we leave Egypt. We leave Ur. Whatever you want to, however you want to see it, we leave it to be with him. Just like Rebecca followed. Eleazar, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does, leading us to the wedding. As we obey, she said, yes, I'll go marry him, and she went off. Okay. Uh, by faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as a foreign, in a foreign land. Well, we're in a foreign land. We're in a foreign land. Obviously, his rules aren't applying to the culture in this world. They hate Christians. They hate believers. Um, dwelling in tents, tents, like our flesh, but they were in literal tents, with Isaac of followers of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which was which has foundations whose architect and builder is God by faith even Sarah herself received ability to conceive even beyond the, the proper time of life since she considered him faithful to faithful who had made or who had promised. Therefore there was a born even one man and him as a as good as dead at that as descendants as the stars of heaven in number and innumerable as the sand which is all these de all these died in faith without receiving the promises 
But having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, for those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own, the promised land, or seeking a kingdom of God, not, not of this world. And indeed, they had been thinking of that country from which they went out. They would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one, proof and point. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Uh, and you can read about that. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob. By faith Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph. And worshipped. By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of, ex of the exodus. So, and I obviously I've been skipping a little bit here just to because you can go read all of this for yourself by faith Moses when he was born was hidden for three months by faith Moses when he had grown up refused to be called the son of Pharaoh that's 24 verse 24 of Hebrews 11 choosing rather to endure ill treatment with people of God than to enjoy passing pleasures of sin hence being grafted in in a sense we become grafted in considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt for he was looking to the reward by faith he, he left Egypt uh, by faith he kept the Passover, verse 28, and sprinkled blood. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as though they were passing through dry land. See, as though they were passing through dry land, and the Egyptians, when they attempted it, were drowned. You know, we're going to see that probably... That that may have a parallel to when Jerusalem is surrounded by enemies, fire comes down from heaven and consumes them all. Verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell. By faith Rahab the harlot did not perish, along with those who were disobedient. You know, and, and it goes on to talk about different people that were, they were sonnet to, they were this and that, they were stoned. And basically, it's faith. By faith, we walk out the stuff even in tribulation and even in trials. And those trials mold us. They mold our faith. They mold our menorah, so to speak. You know, people will bring up Acts 15. Well, that was the basic, it wasn't the end all. And something else, you can read 1 Corinthians 10, and it says, Do not harden your heart as they did. They did with, uh, as an example, but do not harden your heart. And walking the way we should. Here's Romans 8, uh, starting in verse 4. Well, actually, I guess we'll start, and, and I'm going to conclude with this. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for law, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death, it didn't set you away, uh, set you free from the law. It set, set you free from the law of sin and death key point there for what the law could not do 
Weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who did not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Who do not walk according to the flesh. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are accor according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. You know, we can worry about being condemned or we can live, we, we can confess our sin and those sorts of things. You know, our, our fear of judgment is living by the flesh in a sense. Verse 6, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. It's not even able to do so. That's interesting, isn't it? A mindset on the flesh. That's what I see defined as Gentile, non-Hebrews, non-crossed over ones, crossing from death into life. Non-Hebrews follow this. They, they're hostile toward God, because what is God? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. It's not just Christ, although that is... It's... The, the law is God. If you obey God, if you're truly of God and truly of Him, you obey His Torah to the best of your ability. You repent. You, you repent of when you sin. You confess your sins. That's part of repentance. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. For it is not even able to do so. That's what you see in a lot of people today. They're not even... Oh, well, we don't have to keep the law. We don't have to do this. We don't... Really? Okay, whatever. Go your way. And those who are not in the flesh and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God indwells you. The oil, the the light between the oil and remember, the Holy Spirit is down payment. It's how he dwells with us. and as we become more obedient. We have more of God's presence through the Holy Spirit in us. That's why we, our countenance changes. Our spiritual energy changes as we obey with a willing heart. As we set our mind on the things of the Spirit and flesh. We fight, we'll fight this till the day we die. does not have a spirit. He does not belong to him. But anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, through the, though, the law, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive, alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to, you, to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. That menorah within us, that's why it's pure gold, represents the Holy Spirit, yes. But at some point, we will be transfigured to be that pure we will be transfigured and we will be the throne of God the throne of God in a sense by our obedience. By our obedience we enthrone God. By our obedience our faith is perfected. The pure in heart those are the faithful ones. The pure in heart shall see God.
Shalom, shalom. May Yahweh bless and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace.